Now, as you can see, the door behind me is temporarily uh, screwed in there. Um, I mean, the, even the hinges are not recessed in to the jam into the door properly. So I need to uh, take it down, um, recess the door and the jam uh, with a router. And then um, while it's out, I'll do the undercoat and hopefully paint it as well. So here we go. Now the door is about 30 or 40 kilos, so it's quite heavy. I've got no one at the moment to help me out, but um, here I go. So off no funny, funny bits in this video. Well, <laughs> it did happen. I. Uh, Really, I'm hurt. Yeah, I should have actually used the gloves, but yeah, there's um, one thing I didn't notice that I've got a, a screw to be used as a handle to close the door and so on. That just decided to scrape me. That's okay. I live. Okay, time to um, route it up. Time to route it up and then um, paint it. So that I can actually get nice um, recess for my door hinges so the hinges actually um, are sitting inside and flash with the, with, the, with the wood whether on the door side or on the jam side um, the, the door that I the, the first door I actually did go ahead and used hammer and chisel to chisel it out which which is okay turned up okay but um, it's not nice and tight as one would expect because uh, you know each millimeter is quite important for the door so that we can get the sealant uh, when, when I put the door seal in you know there's no air gaps so I went ahead and bought myself um, a trim router now uh, it wasn't it wasn't cheap it was about hundred dollars or so uh, to buy it comes in a nice package with everything I, I actually just opened it up I don't even know what's inside it yet um, but I thought even though it's gonna be used for maybe the two <laughs> doors I'm gonna install like the six hinges um, but I'm actually thinking maybe I'm sure in the future I will require it as well it's it's a nice tool to have um, it took me about an hour to decide whether I should spend a hundred dollars or not um, on it but in the end I decided to buy one because even if I don't use it, if it's in a nice protective case 
20, 30 years from now when I'm actually retired, you know, it might become handy. <laughs> Um, or, you know, in case if I decide to um, build my own mixing desk here um, or any carpentry work in which I need to do which requires grooves and one thing that came into mind and that's when I actually decided that maybe I should spend $100 is when I'm creating my deflectors. Uh, th those are sound deflection panels and basically they are very narrow boxes and they've got slots of whole heap of slots of different sizes of sheet inside so for them to slide in it's very similar to uh, you know those wooden or plastic shelving where you can put your, your, your sheets of paper and then you can draw things out like a mail uh, in and out things it's a very similar concept, so the sound will go in, get deflected, and so on. So it's a great idea to put at the back of the studio, so sound hitting the back wall, we get deflected, and less reflections of sound coming back in. So those sort of panels, when I'm going to create, I need to create grooves in the wooden outside panels for all these things, um, uh, sheets of uh, plywood to slide in. So this will become quite handy so so that's why I decided to buy one so I'm just gonna this is not a opening case of router thing but you know I thought uh, I'll have a look and um, again I don't know what I'm doing but uh, hopefully it'll work out well so that's a nice thing to so in case you're routing at the edges of wood and things so um, as I go along, I'm learning quite a bit of carpentry work here. Um, and uh, as I buy the products, the guys at the hardware shop are happy to help out and explain um, what's good one, what's a bad one. Um, I mean, you could buy these routers you know, down, you know, $60, $65 as well. But I thought I'll buy something a little bit better that might last me into my retirement. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Anyway. I'll just have to work it out. Ooh, instructions. Yeah. That's what I need. Time to go to work. Well, it looks like even though I taken into consideration the depth of the of the head of the trimmer and added the thickness of the hinge I still got a little bit out it's not 100% accurate um, assuming it's because of the wood that I had in there a bit higher than I expected but better be short than too far deep in so I can use the chisel and a hammer to level it up but I guess now I know I can readjust uh, the other two to get the correct uh, correct depth so anyway I'll let you know how I go
these are my plasterboard, Jiprock plasterboard panels. I ordered six of them and they have arrived. These are for the ceiling. You might have recalled that in my last video I did mention that I'll be getting the standard Jeep Rocks, not the acoustic ones. Well, I changed my mind. After thinking about it, I thought I'm only going to do this once. Might as well do it properly. Even if it's an overkill, trying to get two layers of 16 millimeter thick Jeep Rocks on their um, acoustic ones, even though there are three times the price, nearly three times the price each panel, so I thought I'd bite the bullet. It might take me a little bit longer because each one of these panels are about $50 um, Australian, so they're not cheap. Comparing to the standard panel of the same size, um, the 10 millimeter is about $16 or $17 or thereabouts and about $20 for the 13 millimeter. So as you can see, it's um, nearly three times the price per panel. So the cost of, in, of the double layering with standard Jeep Rock from six $700 will jump up to $1,800 or thereabouts. So, but I thought since I'm only gonna do this once, um, I'll do it properly, even if it's an overkill, doesn't matter, uh, the better. But as I said, because of the um, the cost involved, and I need to budget about that. I haven't, I'm already over budget. So I just gotta wait until um, I've got enough money saved up to do the next layer. So what I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna put the, um, the ceilings on, uh, the first layer, and then gonna order the wall ones and give it a try um, because they're all going to be sealed anyway so it's just going to be um, all finished up uh, but they won't have the, the putty on obviously because um, there's no need to I'm going to give it a test and see how it is and then uh, put the second layer on later on so um, so that we got the, the my original plan of having um, two 16 millimeter acoustic drywalls or plasterboard or jeep rock Damn, why do they have so many names? Everything's got multiple names. Damn it. It's so hard to keep it up. So anyway, so that's what uh, is happening as well. Uh, so I, do, I have changed my mind and I will be getting um, what's the best available that I can afford. Well, one thing I should actually mention, these are heavy. They're, they're massive. They're like, again, 30, 40 kilos, probably more because they're very dense um, panels. So to get them on the ceiling, there's no way two person need to be, can do it, let alone alone. Um, you know, you need three people to just hold it up there and then the fourth one to screw it in. So I searched and tried to find out the plasterboard lifters. And you know, the standard ones, or I should say the you know, industry standard ones, they're like five, six hundred dollars to purchase. It was far too expensive. And then I said, maybe I could hire it. And it ended up about $100 a day. I said, well, that's going to be tough because I may need it more than one day because I'm alone and trying to put it up. And then I got to hire it again for another day to do the second layer and so on. Um, I thought, I'll have a quick look on eBay. Well, I could, and I found one for $140 um, plus the delivery, about 200 bucks delivered um, here. It's not obviously a high quality thing, it's standard thing. As long as it does the job, I calculated, well, for the cost of hiring it for two days, it's gonna cost me just as much as buying this. Plus, I'll be able to have it as long as I need. I don't need to rush in the day. If I do half in one day because I'm tired or I've got something else on, I could do the next day and next week or next month or whatever. And then once I've finished, if I don't need it, even if I sell it for $50, I still be better off because uh, someone else will be able to use it for, for their own small job, if they're like me, um, or whatever. Even if I keep it, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Uh, I might come up with some ideas what I can do with it. But yeah, I thought it's cheaper to buy it off eBay, um, though it may not be 
uh, the best quality but as long as it does my panels up on the ceiling it's going to be 12 panels all up uh, if you give me a hand because I don't have anybody else that's your beauty you know I thought I just mentioned that to you so you got to do your research and find out what's available what's there and weigh out the goods and the bads and see if you even if it's cost you a little bit extra for the um, to, initially but in the long run you might be better off so there you go well now it's time to go and put that door back I've already uh, done two cuts of undercoat around the edges um, because it's already coated on both sides um, and I've already as you can see uh, you've, as you've seen I've already drilled the holes for the um, uh, door knob and the door lock and so on so that trimmer does uh, it helps so much it took me not long to actually get a thing and a little bit of uh, chiseling it out so it actually fits in nicely and it looks perfect you know Gee. But it is hard work. If you don't have the right tools, it is hard work. So um, I think it paid off. It paid off, certainly. And when I have to do the next door, it'd be much easier because I already have the experience in using that uh, router, trimmer. Again, multiple names of the same tool. It's called trimmer, router, whatever. Yeah, so I better go and put the door in. Well, here is my poor man's second person help, you know, using some leverage there, leveling it out, putting some spacers at the bottom there and now the door is in place so one person so uh, yeah that's how I put it in <laughs>